When it comes to creativity, for some reason, most people take creativity as something that you're born with, as something like a talent. Most of us think either we have it or we don't. But in reality, creativity is something that you work for and that you're something developed, not you're something born with. You may be thinking about child geniuses who have been really talented from the day they were born and created amazing arts and amazing stuff and they created so many things that you've never ever think of but in most of times those people were born in a such a privileged position where they were allowed to develop their creative skills and creative thinking yes maybe some of us have a creativity tendency a bit more than the rest of us but in most of the scenarios it is not because you're born creative but you grew up in a place where you were able to develop your creative thinking so in my opinion and in a lot of other creative people's opinion creativity is something that you can develop and in today's video i'm going to talk about some of the ways that will help you to develop your creative thinking and creative outcome so first tip that i can give whatever you want to create the important thing is consuming pretty much for everything in life if you want to create something so if you want to output something in the world you need to do an enormous amount of input in the first place what do I mean by that let's say you want to become a youtuber and you want to create a lot of videos which will attract loads of people around the world and you can make money and you can make a living out of it in order to create great videos you need to first fully understand what a great video is and in order to understand that you need to consume enormous amount of YouTube videos to identify what makes a good video and it also depends on your liking too some people like slow paced videos some people like really high paced videos or maybe the back Background, the type of the lens by consuming loads of YouTube videos you will understand what is the type of content you want to create but the only way to understand this is consuming enormous amount of content in the first place and then creating a content I've seen so many people sign up for a YouTube course how to become a youtuber type of courses but most of them don't really consume YouTube in the first place so they don't understand what a youtuber is and what type of value they bring to the table but how how are you supposed to write a book if you don't read books, right? The first thing you need to do is input, but just inputting will not help you. So at some point, at some point where you understand what a great content is, you should switch to outputting where you actually create some content. And by giving yourself an active feedback and understanding the parts that you can improve and maybe the parts you need to change, you will create a great content with the time. So if you look back to my older videos, maybe from five years ago, where I wasn't really consuming YouTube, that much and where I didn't know actually what a YouTube video is my videos weren't really engaging and it really sucked and my channel from five years ago didn't really grow but for four years I dedicated my pretty much free time for consuming YouTube videos and trying to understand what type of YouTube videos I particularly like and what type of YouTube videos that I can create so then I can build a YouTube channel and sustain my life out of that because I knew I'm not the most creative person on the earth but I also wanted to pursue something that is really creative, such as being a YouTuber. So in those four years, I even have a YouTube notebook actually somewhere in my room where I've watched so many videos, more than hundreds and maybe even thousands of videos where I've written the points that I liked from that video. For example, I like this transition or maybe the phrases that she uses. So with the time, the more I repeated it, the more I understood what I like in a video. And I slowly implement those things in my videos and if you have been following this channel for a while you probably noticed that my videos are getting maybe a bit better of course they're not perfect at all because I'm not a perfectionist and I believe in 1% improvement each time uh, we're still improving hopefully <laughs> so if you want to become a creator first consume the type of things that you would like to create and for that I highly recommend Skillshare online classes to consume high quality content Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes across the members over 150 countries across the globe who came together to find inspiration and take their creativity journey to the next level. If you have a specific skill you want to learn, Skillshare is the perfect platform to do that. From productivity to making YouTube videos to storytelling to maybe even drawing on an iPad, there are tons of classes that you will find very helpful. For example, if you want to find a new hobby without using social media, there are cooking classes, drawing classes, 
classes, even classes like playing piano. And if you want to become more productive, check out Ali Abdal's course. And if you want to learn languages, next month I'm releasing my language course on Skillshare. Now is the time to do the thing you always want to do. The first thousand people who use the link will get a free one month trial Skillshare subscription. Check out the links down in the description below and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so tip two is gonna be a more scientific approach to waking up your inner creativity. So in my favorite author's book, from Kawasawa Shion, which is a Japanese book and unfortunately doesn't have English translation. However, in this video, it, it explains the correlation between acetylcholine levels and creativity. When your acetyl Colon levels increases, kind of like activates the creativity in your brain. How can we increase acetylcholine levels in our brain? A really easy way to increase your acetylcholine levels is trying something new and doing something new each day. It can be actually something really simple like talking to new people or maybe eating something new, trying a new recipe, going to a place that you have never been to, trying maybe a different types of a book even, can really help with increasing your acetylcholine level. A great way to increase your acetylcholine and levels is writing out your thoughts. Whenever a new idea comes to your mind, you need to write that down or you need to talk and discuss with somebody else about this idea. And when you're writing it down, when you're discussing about that new idea, your brain gets more activated and when you're sleeping, your acetylcholine levels increases more. But for that, a great sleep is a key factor. In this book, Kabasawa Shion recommends four easy ways to increase acetylcholine levels and it is using four B's in your life. What are they? Bed, bus, bar and bathroom. What does it even mean? So the first B is bed. Before going to bed, read something, read a new type of a book that you have never read. If you are always reading productivity type of books, maybe try out reading something mystery or maybe a book about romance. And then the second B is bus. Oftentimes when we are commuting, most of us just maybe listen to a music or watch YouTube videos aimlessly. If you're watching a YouTube video with a clear purpose in your mind and if you're actively learning something, it is an amazing way you don't need to change that however i've seen so many people on the bus just watching maybe a bit more meaningless type of youtube videos where you don't necessarily learn something new and they also don't really pay attention to it they just watch it for the sake of watching it and spending time if you're doing that a great way to change that is maybe using services like audible where you can listen books if you're getting a bit nauseous when you're reading something on the bus you can listen some new types of books maybe there is no need to stuck in your comfort zone try something out new for example listen to the books that you probably never ever listen to naturally give it a try and use your commute time wisely third b is bar but i don't think this really applies to most of people when you're drinking maybe try different types of alcoholic drinks if you're always drinking beer maybe give it a try to a red wine or give it a try to a different cocktails and all that but i don't think this is the most important tip in my opinion the other tip is bathroom so actually not thinking anything just like relaxing at the moment is a very important way to increase your acetylcholine levels also. I've realized that most of us really consume and consume and consume all the time but we don't really actually give ourselves, give our brain time to actually think and rest. If you're into meditation it is an amazing hobby, keep doing that but if you are hesitating with meditating the great thing that you can do is just don't listen to any music while you are having a bath or while you're showering. Just allow your thoughts to come in and just observe them. Don't try to stop them or don't try to narrate them, just let them because you have been doing a great input on the bus, in your bedroom and also in the bar. So for bathroom, use this time to just really calm down and let go. So let's talk about the conclusion. When I was reading this book, I was actually really surprised how simple it is to awaken your inner creativity. I was expecting something like a bit more drastically life-changing tip or something but when we think about it actually most of the things that we want to achieve in our lives are not that complicated we are the ones who make it complicated so if you want to be creative the things you need to do is basically consuming a loads and loads and loads of things until you understand what a good thing is and then practice and practice and practice give yourself a feedback consume more create more feedback create more this loop it is that easy 
And then the other thing is trying out new stuff every day and don't stuck in your comfort zone because creativity and growth doesn't come from a place where you're comfortable. It comes from a place where you are uncomfortable. So with the time, expand your comfort zone and try out and experience more things in life, which will allow you to bring new ideas and maybe see things from a new perspective. So actually being creative is not that hard. Things you need to do is really simple. However, putting them in practice is much harder than it sounds. So if you spend every day consuming great content and applying them into your life, you will be actually non-stoppable and probably one of the most creative people you have ever met in your life. But don't forget, just watching this video will not make you creative. The actually putting the work in will make you creative. Thank you guys for watching this video and I hope it helped.